Hi and welcome to our new unit on new food products. In this little section we're going to be having a look at all the reasons that companies actually develop new products because it's not just uh, to please the consumer, there's also some other reasons around that. What you're going to do is this will give you an overview and then our lessons in class will help you to understand what's going on in the topic. So the first thing that we're going to have a look at is just a definition of the word innovation. So you would have probably heard the word innovation before and it actually means a new method or an idea or a product. So we're having a look at innovations in the food industry. So consumers get bored. You probably get bored with different foods and they're always looking for new things. So companies uh, take advantage of that and they also take advantage of the fact that their main aim is to increase profits So everything that they do is to increase profits It's not just to please the consumer because if they didn't think they were going to make some money out of it. They wouldn't do it but um, The innovations in the food industry can either be a completely new product or it could actually be a new method of production or delivery of, um, of a product It could just be something like a new variety or a new flavor or it could be a new company coming on to the scene and they're actually making the same product that everybody else is doing. The first reason we're going to have a look at of why companies actually decide to make new products is due to consumer concerns. So two big consumer concerns are either concerns over people's health or concerns about the environment. So you'll notice um, people are getting more and more informed of health and nutrition issues and that's due to the internet, social media, um, there's a bigger variety of information available um, and that is forcing companies to listen to what consumers want and then create products um, that align with that. So you'll see coconut water over to the right and coconut water has you know been the latest craze over the last year in Australia, um, the last couple of years overseas um, and you'll notice that there's lots and lots of different brands of coconut water out and that's because people started to hear that coconut water replaces your electrolytes, um, they started to hear that coconut was particularly good for you because it was high in medium chain fatty acids so companies started to think well we better start producing um, some more competition for the one or two brands of coconut water that were out there and now you're seeing influx of lots of different coconut products. Um, another thing in regards to health is people want some healthier options available. They start to find out that they need lower salt, lower fat in their foods because they have some conditions. So um, companies then decide well we better start making low fat chips because people don't want to stop eating chips altogether but they want to be able to have a lower fat uh, option. The same sort of uh, thing occurs with diet related disorders. You've got things like celiac disease and lactose intolerance. Once upon a time it was really hard to get gluten free products and now um, there's many products that you can just pick up from the supermarket shelf. So that's something that uh, companies looked at. The more that consumers start to be worried about things and they start to want to purchase foods um, then they see that that's an area for them to try and make some money. Second area of concern we're going to have a look at is the environment. So similarly, um, I guess with social media and the internet, people have found out more things about the environment and they want to have products that have minimal impact on the land, the water and the air. So um, growing food products takes um, a massive amount of environmental resources. So people want to know what's actually going into growing their food. Um, and as they start to be concerned about this, um, they might stop buying particular brands of things um, because that company doesn't support the environment or, you know, isn't um, committed to creating less pollution. Uh, seafood is a big thing at the moment. People want to know that uh, their uh, seafood is sustainably fished, um, that it doesn't contain high levels of mercury. Um, so people start to, you'll notice that companies start to put these things on there like cans of tuna saying um, that it's sustainable and things like that. Uh, food waste is another huge environmental issue. Um, so people will start to research and see Next area we'll have a look at is technological developments. 
Uh, so obviously as time goes by, companies get access to more and more technology and that then affects the foods that they have available. So you might have a look, so the 1980s microwaves started to come out, they were much bigger and clunkier than the one pictured there. But as soon as people started having microwaves, then companies were looking at, well, what are some foods that we can get that could either be cooked or reheated in the microwave? And there was a massive influx of foods that were microwavable. Um, even now you'll know that, and some of you might have them in your freezer, you know, the steam vegetables that you can do and you can actually you know they've created a bag that can actually go straight into the microwave and you can cook straight in that so lots of things happening with that the 90s then saw uh, bread makers were really popular so then lots of companies got on board and said well we should create some different bread mixes um, some bread flours that people can use in their machines at home so that was really popular and now one of the later things um, we have uh, the coffee machines like Nespresso and so by having those machines then we had to create pods that could go in it so it's not just the companies who make the machines now who are creating the pods but you'll see like there's lots of different brands even at Audi of pods and things that you can buy so technology has played a huge role in um, helping companies to create new products Another reason why companies might want to make products is actually just to improve the success of their company. They want to make money um, and they need their products to be successful. A lot of money goes into research and development, um, coming up with new packaging and new products and prototypes and things like that. So they actually um, wouldn't go into making new products unless it was profitable for them. Now there's lots of different types of new products. You can have an innovative product that's completely new. So that's like the coffee pods. We didn't really have anything like that before. Um, we had coffee, those coffee machines, so that's an innovative product. Another type would be a line enhancement, and that's where they take a certain food and then they create a new flavor. Um, so you'll see the Adriano Zumbo Tim Tams there, and Tim Tams regularly do this. Every couple of years they bring out uh, new trial packs of different flavors, and that's them trying to improve the success of their company. Tim Tams already um, a very um, well-known brand um, it obviously sells well because there's a, a big space for it in the shopping centers uh, in the supermarkets um, but they actually want to keep people thinking about Tim Tams um, um, so they keep re creating new flavors um, another line enhancement might be a change in nutrition so things we talked about like say Smith's crisps they make some chips and then what they decide to do is change them to make them more healthier Another type of innovation um, is called copycat um, and that's just what the word says. It's where um, there's a product on the market but companies come in and they actually just straight out copy it to try and make some more um, money and improve their success. Companies also like to improve their brand loyalty. So what we're talking about there and you'll see the we've got dairy farmers milk there as an example. Um, so say dairy farmers decided just to sell their milk in one litre bottles. So that's fine, that might suit single um, person households, but in families and things, they actually want to have larger servings available. So then they're up to two litres. Two litres obviously wasn't enough. People were stopping to buy milk more and more. Um, so then they up it to three litres. Or you have the small 600 ml bottles where people might have them just to you know have their coffee at work or something um, then you have UHT varieties um, some people like to keep a whole stack of milk in their cupboards at home so what dairy farmers have done have tried to um, enhance their brand loyalty by making their product available in lots of different sizes um, it also helps to um, keep a wide variety of people using their products a special type of new product um, are foods that have been adapted to suit special needs. And by that, um, I mean the things that are listed here, like Defence Force ration packs, camping supplies, space foods, medical foods, and airline foods. So these are foods, um, it might be an already an existing product, but it doesn't actually suit to take camping. So what they'll do is maybe dehydrate it, or put it into um, a pouch rather than a can to um, decrease the heaviness of it. So that's just companies trying to appeal to another market and to satisfy the needs of people who 
um, have special needs in terms of um, being able to uh, take their food different places or um, have food that um, can't be refrigerated. So you'll see the picture off to the right um, is some camping food, so lots of dehydrated food that you just need to add water to. Um, airline foods is another thing, um, although airline foods are becoming a little bit more sophisticated now. Um, it's starting with a product and then adapting it to suit the needs of a special purpose. The last main reason that companies might try to make a new product is that there have been changes to the target market and we'll talk more about target market as the unit goes along. But some big changes are um, we're becoming a more aged population. So some of these companies, they can't just cater for family size in everything. They have to make small single serve uh, meals or just smaller portion sizes to suit um, people who are living on their own. The other thing that's reduced is family size. You know, we've gone from some families being six or four um, and shrinking them down to uh, two people in the family. So that change in the target market may have decreased um, the amount that people are putting or companies are putting into their products. Uh, a huge change in Australia is our increase in our multicultural culture. Uh, and what that means is that companies are actually now creating food products um, that have a more multicultural twist to them. Um, you'll notice when you go and look in, say, the Asian section of a supermarket, um, that's just hugely expanded over the last few years. Um, it's no longer just a couple of products on the shelf randomly. Um, <clears throat> Australians are starting to eat more and more different foods, so we actually need um, the ingredients to be available uh, in supermarkets. Uh, so that's made a huge difference to what companies will make. Um, that multicultural element also changes the flavours that companies um, will choose to make their things. So say um, frozen dinners, they've gone from just being irregular meat and vegetables to containing things like pasta or being stir fries. Um, so that's to suit the changing um, needs of our consumers. That finishes our section on the reasons why people buy new food products.